Camille uh, was a very powerful storm during the very active 1969 Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, one that was actually known for the Project Storm Fury seeding projects with uh, Hurricane Debbie, uh, which was actually active at the same time as Camille. Uh, but Hurricane Camille, however, was much more powerful than Debbie uh, and was a very small storm that formed in the Northwestern Caribbean and up rapidly intensifying into a major hurricane as it hit Cuba. Uh, and it didn't really lose much intensity while moving over the island and uh, went into the Gulf of Mexico and very rapidly intensified into one of the most powerful hurricanes we've ever seen in the Gulf of Mexico. 175 miles an hour, 900 millibars is just absolutely ridiculous. And Hurricane Camille's uh, landfall intensity is one of the lowest pressures ever recorded uh, for a landfall basically anywhere in the world. It made landfall at peak intensity, the 900 millibars. So Hurricane Camille brought itself with itself a widespread devastation when it moved inland across Louisiana and Mississippi, although New Orleans was mostly spared because it got the weaker western side of the storm. The eastern side of the storm was uh, much more powerful and brought just incredible damage and devastation to Mississippi. Uh, buildings were just completely wiped away, basically as if a tornado had just come through and just done complete destruction. Uh, of course, there's well-known, uh, one of the great legends of Hurricane Camille is the hurricane party that was uh, allegedly held at a hotel. Uh, these stories, some say that it happened, some say that it didn't happen, where the truth actually lies, and we don't really know. But what we can tell you is that that hotel got completely uh, disheveled, to say the least, from this storm. Then it actually moved inland and it caused a lot of flooding damage in Virginia. A lot of people seem to forget about that, about uh, Camille's, that it, it um, caused a lot of flooding. But I think, you know, I still think that most of the destruction along the Gulf Coast is really what people think of when they hear Camille, when, they, when people talk about Camille today. Um, obviously it was horrible, um, the storm surge was absolutely unprecedented at the time, 24 feet of, of storm surge um, on the Mississippi coast. Most of the coastline there was just completely washed away. Destruction was so much that the National Hurricane Center decided that uh, there is there is need to uh, redefined categorization of hurricanes uh, in the Atlantic to better represent how powerful they are, which led to the creation of the Saver Simpson hurricane wind scale, uh, which is, although it has its critics, is regarded as uh, the best scale to measure uh, wind speed in a tropical cycle. On September 13, 2017, the National Hurricane Center began monitoring a tropical wave over the main development region of the Atlantic Ocean. Over the next few days, the system gradually organized until the NHC upgraded it to a tropical depression at midday UTC on September 16. The conditions the depression found itself in were highly favorable, and before long it was upgraded to a tropical storm and named Maria. Following this designation, the storm began to intensify quickly and underwent explosive deepening, becoming a Category 5 hurricane just 54 hours after it was a tropical depression, before striking Dominica with a pressure of 922 millibars and winds of 165 miles per hour, the first Category 5 to ever strike that island. Over 98% of the buildings were damaged or destroyed and damages totaled 1.3 billion US dollars or 226% of the island's GDP. 65 lives were lost there and it is regarded as the worst natural disaster for that nation. 
After weakening slightly as it crossed the island, Maria regained Category 5 intensity as it moved through the East Caribbean Sea and continued to deepen to a peak pressure of 908 millibars, making it the 10th most intense Atlantic hurricane on record. At that time, it attained peak one minute sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. Shortly after reaching this peak intensity, an eyewall replacement cycle began as the hurricane moved past St. Croix, where sustained Category 2 winds were measured. After making its closest approach to St. Croix, Hurricane Maria weakened to a high end Category 4 before making landfall in Puerto Rico with a pressure of 920 millibars and winds of 155 miles per hour. This landfall was catastrophic and is regarded as the worst natural disaster in Puerto Rican history. Hurricane Maria's impacts would cause a major humanitarian crisis for Puerto Rico and major power outages that are the worst in United States history. Hurricane Maria was a truly catastrophic hurricane whose impacts and ferocious intensity will be remembered for generations to come, especially in the islands it impacted. Hurricane Andrew was a powerful Category 5 hurricane from the 1992 Atlantic hurricane season. The storm peaked with winds of 175 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 922 millibars. Hurricane Andrew is one of the most destructive hurricanes to ever hit Florida by the amount of structures and buildings that were damaged and also it was the costliest hurricane on record financially in Florida until Hurricane Irma surpassed that 25 years later in 2017. On August 16, 1992, Tropical Depression 3 formed in the Central Atlantic. Then on August 17th, it strengthened into Tropical Storm Andrew. The storm tracked for several days towards the northwest as a minimal tropical storm. It bypassed the Lesser Antilles completely and turned towards the west after a trough of low pressure towards Andrew's southwest created more favourable conditions within the storm. With low vertical wind shear and a well-defined outflow due to its small size, Andrew entered a rapid intensification phase. On August 22nd, Tropical Storm Andrew intensified to Hurricane Andrew and only 24 hours afterwards became a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 922 millibars and passed through the Bahamas at that intensity. It weakened slightly but then re-intensified and made landfall near Homestead in Florida as a 165 mile per hour Category 5 hurricane. It slightly weakened over the state to a 135 mile per hour Category 4 hurricane but re-intensified slightly to 145 mile per hour still a Category 4 in the Gulf of Mexico. Andrew then made a turn northwards and began a weakening trend and made its second and final landfall look just to the west of Morgan City, Louisiana as a 115 mile per hour Category 3 hurricane and then turned towards the northeast and lost its tropical status over Tennessee. Several tornadoes were spawned from Andrew and catastrophic damage in Florida downing over 70,000 acres of trees in the Everglades and also in areas where Andrew passed through over 117,000 houses were severely damaged or destroyed. Overall, Andrew caused 65 fatalities and $27.3 billion in damages. What Andrew is most known for is its impacts in southern Florida, where it made only the third of four Category 5 landfalls in uh, American history. When it made landfall in the Homestead area, it caused $27 billion in damages. Um, and it's still one of the worst storms to ever hit um, the Florida Peninsula uh, easily. Hurricane Mitch was the 13th named storm, 9th hurricane, and 3rd major hurricane of the hyperactive 1998 Atlantic hurricane season. Forming in late October in the west southwestern Caribbean Sea, Mitch struggled to intensify at first, before conditions improved, allowing a period of rapid intensification, following which it became the 8th most intense Atlantic hurricane on record, with a minimum pressure of 905 millibars and peak winds of 180 mph sustained. 
After reaching that peak intensity, Mitch turns southwards while stalling off the coast of Honduras, producing incredible rainfall totals up to or in excess of 62.87 inches or over one and a half meters in parts of Nicaragua, making it the 29th wettest tropical cyclone on record. After making landfall as a category one and moving inland and dissipating, it would move through Central America as a remnant low and into the Bay of Campeche, where it would redevelop into a tropical storm, bringing further impacts to Mexico and Florida before finally turning extra tropical and moving out across the open Atlantic. The impacts of the extensive rainfall produced outbreaks of disease, landslides and catastrophic flooding that overall made Mitch the deadliest hurricane in modern history in the Atlantic Basin. The impacts of this storm cannot be overstated, with the President of Honduras claiming that it reduced 50 years of progress in a single event. Massive amounts of aid poured in to help recovery and reconstruction efforts and to a large degree aid was successful. However, with recent storms drawing parallels, it seems that this part of the world may be more prone to such events than we'd like to believe. It stalled just north of Honduras for days, dropping almost over 75 inches of rain in some parts of Central America. It was an absolutely devastating storm for them. Um, it was the second deadliest Atlantic hurricane in history behind only the great hurricane of 1780 and the deadliest, by far the deadliest in modern times. August of 1980, after a very slow start to the Atlantic hurricane season, out came Hurricane Allen, a Category 5 monster um, that formed at the end of July um, in the central tropical Atlantic before gradually intensifying into the Caribbean Sea where it became a Category 5 uh, just south of Hispaniola. Now when it was designated Category 5 for the first time, it had a central pressure of 911 millibars, which is another record in and if of itself, being the lowest pressure ever recorded in the Eastern Caribbean Sea until that record was broken by Hurricane Maria of 2017. Allen then weakened to Category 4 status and passed through Hispaniola and Jamaica. Now once it had done so, it regained Category 5 status and stayed at that intensity for over a day whilst delivering moderate damage over the Cayman Islands. The NHC recognizes this peak intensity to be 190 miles an hour, which makes Allen the strongest Atlantic hurricane in recorded history. Allen once again weakened to Category 4 status as it underwent an Iowa replacement cycle and crossover mountainous terrain, reaching Category 5 status for a third time as it moved over the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, keeping its Category 5 status for another full day as pressure once again fell to 909 millibars. Allen eventually made landfall on August 10th at 12 p.m. Central Time near Port Isabel, Texas as a Category 3 intensity storm with winds of 115 miles an hour and a central pressure of 945 millibars. Hurricane Allen caused 269 deaths and over 1 billion US dollars in damages, which in today's money would equal 3.1 billion US dollars. On September the 8th in 1988, a tropical depression formed just east of the Leeward Islands. It would intensify around 24 hours later to Tropical Storm Gilbert as it passed over those islands. Gilbert would then become a hurricane around two days later and then would undergo rapid intensification on approach to Jamaica, 
reaching its initial peak intensity as a Category 3 hurricane before striking Jamaica. Uh, it managed to intensify into a Category 5 storm, but not just any Category 5 storm. Uh, it was the second um, most intense Atlantic hurricane in recorded history. Gilbert uh, then, thankfully, it weakened some before it made landfall um, on Cozumel in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico in the state of Quintana Roo. Obviously, it was, I think, it was one of the most powerful landfalls um, ever recorded in the uh, Atlantic Basin. And then would re-intensify briefly back up to Category 4 intensity before making landfall in Mexico. And then around two and a half days later, it was barely traceable over the United States. Uh, Gilbert was, at the time, the costliest Atlantic hurricane. It held that record for one year until Hurricane Hugo passed it um, the following year in 1989. Killed hundreds of people. Um, most of the fatalities were in Mexico, although um, Jamaica also received um, uh, extensive uh, impacts as well from uh, Hurricane Gilbert. Hurricane Dorian was the fourth named storm of the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season and the strongest storm of the year. It formed in late August from a tropical wave in the open Atlantic and became a tropical storm on approach to the Lesser Antilles. It headed off towards the uh, the Windward Islands. It made landfall in Barbados and St. Lucia as a tropical storm. Uh, at first, it was just, you know, your normal tropical storm, nothing special. And then once it got north of Puerto Rico, decided to ramp up into a Category 5 monster, uh, delivering a devastating blow to Abaco Island. I remember particularly a time when it was a Category 1 intensity after passing the, uh, the Lesser Antilles, moving out back over the Western Atlantic, when um, we were sort of, as a team, we were getting cold feet really, we were thinking, well, on our toes, what's, what's actually happening with this? Is it going to intensify further? Satid was coming up with readings, getting up towards Category 2 status. Uh, the eye, I believe, was forming just fine underneath some significant cloud tops which sort of disguised its intensification phase. The pressure was always falling, the first part of its intensification phase, and it was a really a gradual thing that kept going all the way through as it headed towards the Bahamas. But it all ultimately it culminated in a 185 mile an hour category 5 making landfall um, on Great Abaco in the Bahamas. It was the strongest um, Atlantic hurricane landfall in recorded history, certainly, without any doubt, the strongest in recorded history in the Bahamas. At landfall, Dorian had one of the most impeccable structures I've ever seen in a tropical cyclone. Um, its eye was perfectly symmetrical and perfectly circular, with a temperature of around 20 degrees. It had a ring of uniform cloud tops around the eye wall, um, they weren't uh, particularly strong, they weren't particularly as cold as you'd see um, in Western Pacific tropical cyclones, but at that latitude where Dorian was, the tropical pause is lower, and of course the cloud tops can't reach that high. This made Dorian tie with the 1935 Labor Day hurricane for highest wind speeds of an Atlantic hurricane ever recorded at landfall. After that, it went on to strike Grand Bahama at similar intensity, stalling just north of the territory with unrelenting winds for at least 24 hours. It stalled over just north of Grand Bahama for about 24 hours as a Category 5. Obviously, upwelling got to it and it had weakened down to a Category 2. Restrengthened to a Category 3 and then back down to a Category 2 as it was moving up the Florida the coast. Thankfully, Florida, which was projected to receive a major hurricane, um, did not get that. If it did, it's hard to imagine what would have happened. A 185 mile an hour storm hitting Florida. Um. And then going up through the Carolinas where it brought some tropical storm force conditions up through United States headquarters here. 
and made a landfall on Cape Hatteras, re-intensified it to a Category 2 up through Canada. Uh, what made Dorian so significant is that it was one of the few storms me on a personal level for Force 13. Uh, I had a big hand in on the production side of it. I was on a lot of the streams and produced seven of the 39 documented storm updates that we did on Dorian. Hurricane Irma was the ninth named storm of the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season and the strongest storm of the year in regards to peak wind speeds. The storm formed in late August from a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. This wave quickly organized and became a tropical storm shortly pa after passing Cabo Verde. Irma then quickly intensified and became one of the furthest east major hurricanes on record before then having several eye roll replacement cycles have its intensity fluctuate. And then it kind of fluctuated between Cat 2, Cat 3 as it underwent several eyewall replacement cycles um, as it moved off towards the west over the tropical Atlantic. Eventually Irma got itself together though, um, rather unfortunately. Uh, it strengthened into a Category 5 monster, uh, peaking with winds of 180 miles an hour, becoming one of the strongest Atlantic hurricanes ever recorded as it was making landfall in um, the Lesser Antilles, as it making landfall in um, Barbuda, St. Martin, and Virgin Gorda in the Virgin, in the British Virgin Islands. All of those, it made landfall with winds of 180 miles an hour. Starting on September 6th, Irma peaked with one minute sustained winds of 180 miles per hour and a minimum pressure of 914 millibars. Irma was the ninth named storm, fourth hurricane, second major, and first cut five of the 2017 North Atlantic hurricane season. And then Irma held its category five intensity for a remarkably long period of time. It really held together for several days as it was uh, tracking uh, just north of the Greater Antilles. Irma marched through the Greater Antilles, making a category five landfall in Cuba, the first storm to do so since the 1924 Cuba hurricane, before making its last landfall in Florida. Uh, as it was moving over Cuba, Irma weakened to a Category 2, but as it emerged into the Straits of Florida, it re-strengthened to a Category 4, making landfall on Florida Keys. It's Category 4, and I believe it is one of the strongest to make landfall on the Florida Keys, um, at least in modern times. Irma caused widespread and catastrophic damage throughout its long lifetime particularly in the northeastern Caribbean and Florida Keys. It caused catastrophic damage in Bermuda, St. Barthelemy, St. Martin, Angela and the Fortune Islands as a Cat 5 hurricane and took at least 134 lives. In my opinion, Irma is one of the craziest and most perfect tropical cyclones to have ever formed, having the textbook shape, eye and intensity. One of the craziest storms to have ever raged in the North Atlantic. Hurricane Wilma was the most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin and the second most intense tropical cyclone recorded in the Western Hemisphere after Hurricane Patricia in 2015. Wilma made several landfalls with the most destructive effects felt in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, Cuba and the US state of Florida. Wilma, I mean, blew everyone away though when it uh, basically set the record for the most rapid intensification of any cyclone in recorded history, I think, um, uh, it went through on the night of October 18th through the early morning hours of October 19th, 
Wilma went through an unprecedented um, intensification phase. Uh, the, after that, it reached its historic peak intensity. Uh, it is considered by most to be the strongest and most intense Atlantic hurricane in recorded history, and it is also one of the strongest tropical cyclones ever recorded. Winds had decreased to 150 miles per hour before it reached the Yucatan Peninsula on October 20th and 21st. After crossing Yucatan, Wilma emerged into the Gulf of Mexico as a Category 2 hurricane. After that, Wilma made landfall on Cape Romano, Florida, with winds of 120 miles per hour. As Wilma was crossing Florida, it briefly weakened back to a Cat 2 hurricane, but again re intensified for the last time into a Cat 3 in North Atlantic. A uh, very powerful storm to hit Mexico, although damage wasn't as bad as uh, anticipated, even when it stalled. The last uh, major hurricane to hit the United States until Hurricane Harvey in 2017. And it was the last one to hit Florida until Irma of 2017. And the last hurricane to hit Florida until Hurricane Hermine of 2016. At least 52 deaths were reported and damage totaled to 22.4 billion, most of which occurred in the United States. In 2015, the Eastern Pacific um, was really experiencing near record um, amounts of activity thanks to um, an El Nino. It was Category 4s after Category 4s after Category 4, um, but no Category 5s yet, um, at least until late October of that year when Tropical Storm Patricia formed um, south of the uh, Gulf of Tehuantepec. Initial thoughts on Patricia at that time were it was going to be quite a weak system, only peaking as a Kiwi 2 or 3. Basically explosively intensify, one of the most rapid intensifying storms in history, actually. Patricia, a few hours later, would reach its ultimately peak intensity as the strongest hurricane ever recorded in the National Hurricane Center's area of responsibility, peaking with our estimate winds of 208 miles per hour and a pressure probably around 872 millibars. Patricia would then weaken slightly down to winds of 150 miles an hour before making landfall in the coast of Mexico. But it did cause, it still did cause a lot of damage in Mexico. Uh, it was uh, certainly for the area that it impacted, it was uh, one of the worst um, hurricanes that um, in their history, um, as well as Patricia, is also the strongest landfalling um, Eastern Pacific tropical cyclone on record. Historic intensity, historic intensification, just an all-around historic storm shattered several records.